Greek mythology rages to life in mythic battles pantheon. Become a god and command heroes and monsters in a battle for Olympus at beastofwar.com. Progress comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastofwar.com. Hi guys and welcome to another War Machine Tips and Tactics and we're going to be looking at something well based on what the table setup is it looks like a bit of a, a silly crazy situation here yeah um, so uh, our, our convergence player has done something a little silly so what we're gonna be talking about today is the idea of power attacks uh, specifically slams and throws in a way that a lot of new players don't necessarily think of okay so when they learn uh, a new player often learns they can slam or what they can throw they think of doing it only to uh, the enemy model they're trying to do it to for example uh, Matt, Maddox here has a decently high def and I really want to get Lucant into melee with her yeah uh, and uh, if I could knock her down uh, that would be really great it would make my melee attacks easy so you know often we'll see someone be like well, I'll take my galvanizer and I'll, I'll perform a slam, mm -hmm. and I'll have the galvanizer slam Maddox and, and try and get that slam attack off to Cinder flying and, and knock her down. But often, you can use your opponent's models against them with power attacks mm -hmm. and throws. And here's a very simple example. Look at what's available, and we see that we've got uh, this, this Firefly standing right here, and he's not in a great position. I mean, Lucant's not going to slam, and no. uh, I, I don't really you know have anything great, but... If I have my corollary perform, perform a slam and slam the firefly mm -hmm. and boost a hit and uh, let, let, let's just roll the damage for the fun yeah, of it. Yeah, let's just roll it. Yeah. And successfully hit him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then send him flying so up to five inches you know, up into this wall and stopping here. Yep. And he would take some damage from that. And then I have my galvanizer perform a slam. Go into him. Uh, he's knocked down, so I automatically hit. And then send him flying four inches. So he actually lands on top of Maddox, and then the rules of least disturbance say you push the model the least amount so that it's, it's no longer under the model that got hit. Yep. And Maddox has now been knocked down by having the mm -hmm. Firefly slammed over her. So now Lucant, without having to try and hit a, a, an incredibly high defense like Maddox has on one of my, my little lights here's uh, slam attacks, yep. Lucant's now totally open. Maddox is knocked down, he can charge all the way in, all of his melee attacks automatically hit, and it's with ease he's going to beat Maddox to death. Yeah. So the idea here is sometimes your opponent will try and brick up. Mm -hmm. They'll try and put, create their, their, their caster in a very safe situation. We were only using a handful of models here, but you can imagine the caster with maybe lines of infantry in them. Yeah. Use those lines against them. Mm -hmm. If you see an opportunity to throw or slam a model that maybe can line up in a certain way where you can get it through the high defense models that you're going to be spending a uh, very valuable focus to, to boost even hit, yeah. if you can sort of see the puzzle and ping pong the models the right way, as soon as you can slam or throw it into what your target is and knock it down, you're in a, a great position. Yeah. So it's really a matter of not just... I guess this was sort of hark back to like a target priority thing where you know your end game mm -hmm. is to get the, the caster, get that, get your caster into melee and kill the other one. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily going to be the unit that you're activating right now that's going to do that. You want to, is it, as many of these tips and tactics seem to be focusing on, is clear the path. Clear the path. Get, this, you know, get the annoying stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. Get the threat out of the way so that it's safe for you to go in and start to hammer on the caster. Yeah. And we focused a lot of these on, on the caster because uh, this is sort of applies to both new players and veteran players. A new player yeah. is often going to look for the caster kill. And here's some just basic tips that work that. For veteran players, it's more, I'm trying to take out this key solo. Yeah. I'm trying to take out this key piece. And these tips still work. Maybe you can use the model positioning around them to the advantage to get that high def solo down. Maybe you have a, a high def solo that's very valuable that has stealth and you can't shoot it. Yeah. So maybe there's a way to slam a couple things with your jacks in a position that you send it flying through this high def solo the way maybe it has low armor and the slam kills him. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what your target is, but using the different positioning tricks, whether you're trying to pull them into you, 
uh, figure out your different angles or vectors that you may not have seen or whether you're using their own models against them. Mm -hmm. It's all about knowing where the attack is and then understanding the threat ranges behind them and where they might come in and what you have to face afterwards. Yeah. When you take sort of the, the whole series we've done here and all the tactical tips and you put these together, mm -hmm. including the, the smart use of focus and fury, yep. you'll find that you'll have... It seems like a lot, and that's sort of the beauty of War Machine. War Machine is a game that requires a lot of uh, a lot of thinking, a lot of strategizing, mm -hmm. seeing combos, seeing the different uh, tactics, and pulling things that your opponent never sees. Some of the best uh, the games is when someone looks at the table for five minutes and they go, "I've got it." Yeah, and then they just do a bunch of different maneuvers. They've got their order of operations in place, and then they win the game. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's something that. Like, I hadn't played War Machine in years. Yeah. So late Mark 1, early Mark 2 was when I'd sort of tinkered with the, the system a bit. And Justin always told me, he, he's a meta guy. Mm -hmm. So he would sit down with the, the cards and he'd work out the synergies between units and, and casters. Right. But what I've noticed is that in the series of these little tips that it's maybe not just as important, but yes, you need to know what the, the individual unit or model can do. Right. But at the same time, it's sort of going... Well, how do I clear the path? It's the order of activation that seems to be something that's very, almost almost more important than the the army that you've set out. Absolutely, you can ruin an entire turn mm. by doing the, the the wrong thing. If say and we don't have it in this situation, but say that you have a a, ma a unit charge in first, mm -hmm. and you were just really enthusiastic about having them all come in and attack, and then you realize you've left yourself no space, no room for the yeah. big heavy hitter behind them to go in and finish the model off. You may have ruined your whole turn. Yeah, you know. So, so taking the time to really figure out your order of operations, look at the puzzle that's on the board at yeah. any time, and determine how do I fit the pieces together to get the result I want. And then the fun of the game often comes from the fact that the dice are involved. Yeah. So you're trying to fit the the piece of the puzzle together, and then you roll the dice, and sometimes it fits great, yep. and sometimes it just bounces right back out, and you've got to <laughs> sort of adjust plans on the fly and go, right, well that didn't work. What do I do next? Yeah. So you, you're kind of your overall strategy, and then you have the contingencies that you need to be thinking of. Yeah. So as you go to roll the dice, you go, if this doesn't work, I have to do the next thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's been it's a bit of an eye opener because what what had turned me off, and I'm going to be honest, what sure. turned me off from War Machine was Justin talking about the synergies. If you don't get the synergies, you don't get a good game, and I'm like, that sort of dissuaded me okay. somewhat. But now that we've had a chance to film with you guys and seeing A, your enthusiasm, B, your knowledge, and your yeah, enthusiasm, passion, everything for I'm it. I'm super hype at all times. He is. It has been a fantastic time <laughs> filming. <laughs> but it, that's what's enthusing me now is that I'm realizing it's not just look at the stat cards and go, I have the perfect army. Correct. Because that's, that's the mentality I was put into. Because mm -hmm. even when I was in the old gaming clubs, it was just my army beat yours on the cards. And I was like, that can't be right. There right. must be something I'm doing wrong or something like that. Because clearly everyone I was playing was far more experienced and weren't overly willing to teach the basics that you've been teaching me. And, and that's the has. most important thing is having someone go over not only the core basics, there's, a, there's our understanding of the game. I roll two dice, does this hit? I roll damage, does I break armor? But then there's just basic core strategies that's yeah. worth learning, which we've kind of been covering because... You will sometimes have bad matchups. If you bring mm -hmm. an army that does nothing but shoot, and your opponent brings an army that does nothing but have stealth, mm -hmm. and stealth says you all ranged attacks outside of five inches miss, that's a bad matchup. Yeah. So what do you do? How do you counter that? You look at the, 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 the pieces of the puzzle available to you, and you have to sort of switch gears. It's almost yeah. like going for that slam and rolling snake eyes. Mm -hmm. But it, it's army-wide. It happens sometimes, but it's definitely not the majority of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing to know is if you understand these core... I'd say almost slightly advanced strategies beyond the, the most beginner level. And, and when mm -hmm. you're starting to really get into the game, if you understand these, you can snatch victory as long as you're, you make the right calls yep. and you roll well. Yeah, certainly. And if, if they are out and you've seen the, the other videos that we filmed, you will see all this cropping up. You will see bad dice rolls. You will <laughs> see good placement, bad placement, uh, yep. close matches and, you know... It's it's been a fantastic learning experience for someone like me to come in and sort of go. Just assume I was the first thing I said to you guys. Just assume I know nothing. Yeah, <laughs> and away we went. Yep. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed these little videos. You're picking stuff up. Put your comments in below and let us know what you think of it. 
And yeah, so we'll see you in the next one. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.